So, you've all heard of the term simping. The question is, is it actually causing a blockage to your manifestation? Let's consider what is simping. You've heard the definition, you've seen it on TikTok, you've seen it on Instagram, you've probably seen it here on YouTube. The thing you need to be aware of is, it's somebody who beckons at the call of someone else. Why is it toxic to be a simp to begin with? Well, simping um, is people pleasing, disempowering, which leads to a lack of boundaries, not letting go or detaching, a lack of trust, if you will. So in other words, every single time, if you were to simp, by getting into this state of disempowerment, by giving your power away to person X, Y, Z, especially you gentlemen who tend to simp a lot around women. Don't worry, I've been there about myself. I know how you feel. What this does is it actually creates a negative energy output. Disempowerment is, um, if you think about it on Esther Hicks's uh, scale of the emotional guidance scale, disempowerment's like at number 22. It's right at the bottom. You've hit rock bottom. The good thing is you can only rise. You can't drop any further. However, when you are still in that state, you're acting from a place of fear. You're not willing to give up. You feel that you can't live without a certain person. You can't imagine them not being around you. They've literally got you wrapped around their little finger, right? It is a difficult situation to be in because you've been conditioned to become like that. If you are somebody who identifies as a simp, somebody that has got nice guy tendencies, uh, simp tendencies, and a large number of us will have them, um, it's because we were not taught to draw boundaries. We were not taught to, we were literally said, okay, if somebody is going to do this to you, um, then you should, uh, if somebody's going to say, give me something, you'll say, okay, how much do you want, right? Rather than saying, well, what are you bring to the table, right? So this is the reason why it causes a blockage to your manifestation. What happens is you end up not being able to manifest things because you are acting from a place of fear. How do you expect the universe to give you something? Even if you're consciously working towards manifesting it, you've done all the scripting, you've done all the affirmations, you've done all the visualization and feeling, and guess what? You're still not even seeing results. Why do you feel that that is the case? I'll tell you why. You're probably getting that because you might just be simping. Um, I don't know if this is the case or not. I haven't actually heard of anybody talking about it on social media at the minute. Maybe it's out there, maybe I just haven't come across it. Comment down below. Please let me know that if, if if that is the case, I'd like to know your thoughts. But as far as I know, nobody seems to be making a connection with simping tendencies, um, which I've often attributed very similar to an anxious attachment style. Um, because people who have got the anxious attachment style, they're not all of them, but, the, but a fair few of them, they tend to have this tendency of um, the ones that really have it bad, and it's not a criticism, it's just something, unfortunately, they have. Um, because of their extreme anxious attachment style, they end up simping, thinking that the other person is going to give them what they want, thinking that if they be the nice guy or a nice girl, the universe will give them what they want. Not necessarily. There could be an underlying lesson of self-empowerment involved. Take inventory of that. So the next thing is, well, then how exactly do I go about st stopping myself from simping? It's quite simple. Be yourself, consciously work towards stop seeking external validation from people, and above all, be gentle with this one. Call yourself out. When you are self-empowered to call yourself out, you are less likely to simp around people because you become consciously aware of it. You bring mindful, you know, you could use mindful meditation, you could bring mindful awareness, practice it consciously on a daily basis to ensure you're no longer simping. Another one that you could probably use is uh, finding a fellow simp to hold you accountable. Teaming up with somebody who might be a friend, who you know has admitted to you that they're a simp and you've admitted to them that you're a simp. Basically, you could be 
um, simping partners, i.e. you could, uh, or rather anti-simping partners, you could call each other out, um, you could hold uh, one accountable, you know, maybe meet up once a week for a coffee or something and just say, look, dude, bro, girl, I had this, this is what happened, um, I ended up doing this. So the other person might ask you, okay, well, why did you do that? Did you not think about doing this? I think it was that same tendency. Okay, don't worry about it. What are you gonna do next time? I think you should do this. Working with somebody will actually show you, uh, could show you a fresh new perspective you may not have thought of before. Problem is when you're simping around people, you don't think straight. The degree of rationality of a human being goes right out the window. Additionally, you could use something like uh, shadow work journaling. Shadow work is uh, amazing. Shadow work is basically the antidote if simping is the virus. Journaling is a great way of doing it. Um, I'm currently on uh, journal number four, which I actually have right here. Got a big one. What journal number four? Uh, I actually might be my fifth one. This is my fifth one, sorry. This is my fifth one. And um, being um, somebody that journals every so often, but I just sort of catch up with it. Um, you actually end up doing something which is processing and working through the pattern. Seeing yourself and then one day going back and reading it and saying, okay, I remember I did that. I can't remember I did that all those years ago. You go, you'll see a marked difference maybe six months down the line that when you've had a similar situation, which the universe will throw you away to test to see if you've integrated the lesson or not, you will then be able to see, okay, right, I've made that mistake six months ago. Didn't make it this time. Good, I've integrated it. Yes, victory. You might find suddenly things might work. You might suddenly find money manifesting out of nowhere. You might suddenly find uh, guys notice you if you're a lady watching this. Guys, if you're watching this, you might suddenly start noticing that women might start noticing you and you had such low self-esteem before that you didn't even think you stood a chance with anyone. Things will change for you, trust me. A final point that you could do, and I got this from um, uh, a, a fellow YouTube channel here, uh, it's called a Crappy Childhood Fairy, I think. Uh, her name's Anna Runkle. I love her content. She's an, she's an amazing lady. Um, she works and she's got an amazing uh, channel. Um, I highly, rec uh, highly recommend you go and check it out. I watch, I try to watch one video of hers a day. She talks about CPTSD, etc., and how people have gone through trauma, etc., and how to get out of it, how to stop it affecting your life. It's pure self-empowerment. That's why I love the work. She's made a recommendation. This is her, uh, I'm not claiming credit for this, I'm giving full credit to her. She, she's got this idea where she says, uh, she writes, I fear, on a piece of paper, followed by blah, 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 blah. You write out your fear, you write it out, and she recommends, um, I think she said you could probably like put it in water or something to let like water, if you want to put it down the river, you could burn it. Obviously just be careful doing it indoors, especially you don't want to start a fire. Or you could just simply shred it. I tend to shred things. It's just easier. My paper management is a lot faster. Um, also, if you don't want someone to see something, you just literally finish it done. You could write a whole page of A4, half page of A4, shred it, done, finish. Nobody sees it. Um, and it's a great way of managing uh, your emotions in a way that will eventually help you to, if not eliminate your simping tendencies, bring them to an absolute minimum. Thank you for hanging around for this. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up here. It's always a pleasure to see you. If there's anything else you wanna add or you want to talk about, don't forget to drop me a line below. I'm always excited to hear from you if you want to drop me a line. You might even end up helping somebody, it'd be great. Um, so yeah, I'll be back with another video shortly. This is Nim, take care, signing out. See you in the next one, ciao.